Another Dorado fly for you, for, from your friendly friends at Fly Fish Food. That's a lot of Fs. So this fly doesn't start with an F. This is a Sloptimus Prime. The same general pattern and idea from my, my mullet pattern, but a lot of times Dorado chase looking for, for their tails. So this one's designed to look like a Dorado tail. We caught some fish on a fly just like this last time, so check it out. Okay, so this fly has um, a really long tail in the back. It's going to be tied on this 5 aught Gamakatsu B10S as the main chassis. But I wanted some more length to tie fly or tie materials on. I'm not going to put a hook on the back of this uh, because I don't want very many. Uh, I don't want very many um, breakage points or any weaknesses. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these. What are these called? These are next gen, next generation articulated shanks. They're super cool. You can get a really good uh, tie down with these. Um, you're not going to have anything slip off, or you're not going to have any eyes open up. So I'm just going to cover that whole thing with thread to cover it up and to kind of close it down. Um, don't put a lot of tension on your first go with these shanks because the the wires tend to move around a lot. So. On the Sloptimus Prime mullet version, I used some hackle for the tails. But the Dorado tail has a black stripe all the way down uh, the, the whole tail. So I'm just going to use black synthetic yak. And that's what, what I'm going to tie the rest of the fly with, is synthetic yak. So I've cut this off of the hank. It's, I don't know, about 12, 13 inches. And it's all flat like this. So if I take my fingers and I just start picking some of these fibers out, I can create a taper. So I do that, roll my fingers, and then I've got a nice little taper. So you can pick that as much as you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now the cool thing is if I pull this up and I just take these and stroke those the other way, now I also have a taper on the other end. So I'm actually going to use both of these for the tail. So I'm going to cut that in half. So once I create that taper, here's my tie-in point, and then I've created another mirror image of this, this that I'm tying in. So this is going to be tied in um, just standard way, just right on top of the hook shank. And I'm going to tie these in both one, one right on top of the other. That one needed a little bit of preening still. We got it. Okay, and the key to this fly is to avoid bulk. Um, that's the whole idea behind this because when you're fishing Dorado, you're making lots and lots of blind casts. You're just casting to areas. Um, so you're going to be, you know, wearing your arm out. We like to fish an eight weight. So you want a really long fly that's still light enough to be cast with an eight weight which will save your arm a lot more than a 9 or a 10 when you cast it all day, every day. Ooh, I got strings going everywhere. Okay, this is called squish chenille in the medium size, I believe. And I'm just going to use the rotary feature and wrap that about halfway up the shank. This is just kind of a filler material, um, but this, this has a little bit of vibration built into it because it's these are like little rubber rubber legs coming off of it. And we'll use the same stuff just in a bigger size on the front of the fly. Squatch, you got to be quiet. We're making a video, puppy. Yeah, your collar's loud. She's totally just mad at me. She thinks I'm an idiot. All right. So I have pre-prepared some clumps of orange and yellow. And I've done the same thing I did with the tail. So I just, I tapered that to a point and... I'm going to show you this technique too that I just did. So if you have this, um, you know, I'm, I'm measuring here to see how long it needs to be. I'm going to tie it in reverse style though. So this is going to point the other way. So if I just take my thumbs, grab it with my thumbs and then my finger, it will reverse it. And I still have that clean tie in point. So I'm going to tie that in, butt it right up next to the chenille. Few turns, turn it upside down and do the same thing with a chunk of yellow. Now, you can see on the synthetic yak, 
The yellow seems to be a lot more crinkly than the orange. It's not a big deal at all. It's still going to turn out just fine. It will swim great. So once I get those both wound down, I'm going to grab both of these fibers and just kind of pinch them and move them a little bit like that so that it covers up the, the outside edges. And then I'll just take the top color. Usually the top color is always darker. But I'm going to take the top color and fold that over. If it'll participate in this activity. Bring your thread up and then just preen the rest under with your other fingers and then build a bit of a dam up in front of it to keep those swept back. Okay, now again, I'll do another real quick adjustment to make sure that it's covering both sides. And then I just have like a little bone comb from hairline so that I can take all these fibers and just brush them out. All right, so there we have it. That section's wrapped in. And we're just going to repeat that whole process starting from the chenille and we'll terminate up here with another clump of the synthetic yak. And we'll whip finish and get ready for the next one. A little bit of super glue to persuade it to be durable. All right, and I'm just going to take this comb now and I'm just going to brush all these together. So because this is 100% synthetic, I can come in and look at the shape of the fly. And I like it. I mean, uh, it's pretty good. So we're looking at a pretty good taper. And uh, keep in mind that's going to slim down once it gets wet. But um, that's kind of what we're looking at. And yes, you could fish it just like that. You know what? I, I'm looking at the back and it is kind of a little bit thick right there. So what I can do is I'm going to grab some of these longer bladed scissors and I can just kind of come in here and make some really micro cuts to this. So not a lot. You could sit and pick at that for hours. Once we have this done, we're going to take a double strand of the articulated wire and string our fly onto it and I already put an articulation bead here. We'll just string those back through that bead. All right, so we've got a bead on the, the articulation shank with four strands of wire coming out of it. Because those Dorado will grab onto stuff and hang on to it. So even though there's not a hook back there, we do need to make it kind of strong. All right, so this is why I like this uh, Renzetti Saltwater Traveler. And as you can see, it's kind of a, a cool custom build that I kind of Frankenstein together. Um, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to put a 5 aught Gamakatsu. And with this Saltwater Traveler, all you got to do is put it further back in the jaw. Level it up. Let me see. About right there. And I'm only going to crank it about that far with my with my cam, and it is rock solid. Okay, so right after that, I just realized I got to take the hook back out and put it like this. It's a good reminder. But what we're doing is we're putting a keel weight on this fly. Because when you have a fly that's really long but narrow, kind of this way, it's going to want to ride on its side like this. So if you look at this, I built a keel weight onto this fly. And when I was fishing this in Argentina, I could strip it as fast as I could and it wouldn't roll. It would just track true every single time. 
So I'm taking 025 lead and I'm just starting down here. I'm not even counting the wire wraps. That's usually your job and you put it in the comments so that I know. We're just gonna build it up about to right there and wiggle it off or cut it off. And then I'm gonna make another layer and this is kind of a cool technique you can do with all kinds of flies. But I'm gonna take the same diameter and you can do it with thinner as well. And I'm just gonna wrap right in the middle of all the other lead. And what it did is it tries to separate the bottom portion of lead and that's, that's, that's what we want actually. So when I'm ready to tie that off right here, I can just sink that down into the lead and it looks just like the, 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 the previous wrap. So if I pull that off, you can't even tell that there's a seam. Um, I'm going to do the same thing back here. That one's off. So we have a really cool, you know, no, no real tag ends on that lead. I know, yeah, cool story. Real hard to put lead on a hook, Cheech, I know. I was actually pretty stoked with that when I figured that out. So I'm just gonna put some thin UV resin on this to cover it up. This just adds to the durability. It makes sure that the keel weight is always on there. Um, if this comes off, the fly is not gonna function the way it's supposed to at all. So I'm just gonna put a ton in there and then that will kind of taper and make kind of like a football shaped taper. Spencer doesn't know what football is. He just plays slappy pickle. What's that? What's it called again? Pickleball. Oh, pickleball. It's not called slappy pickle? No. The ball's not even made out of pickles, dude. That's confusing. All right, so slappy pickle, whatever it is. Uh, we're back to the tying of the flies, Spence. Jeez. All right, so that's cured. We had a slappy pickle conversation. All good. So we're going to put the vise back in the, or we're going to put the hook back in the vise. If you can't tell already, I just say whatever word's easiest, and I screw up all the time. So yes, we know. Put it in the comments. I probably said uh, tie it to the dubbing or, or, or put the, the vise in the hook. All right. So same thing. By the way, this is like a 210 denier thread. Tying this with GSP is actually kind of a bad idea, and the reason being... GSP is very, very slick, and so are all these materials. Very slick. And GSP is really not going to add that much durability on this fly. So, I'm going to take this fly, and I'm going to put it on here like this. And just kind of trap down all those wires. Wrap those forward. Trim them off with some scissors that have that gnarly sauce on them. AKA scissors that you don't need to cut really fine stuff later. And I'm just going to take that wire and fold it back on top of itself. And then we're just going to give this a nice cover up. Whew. Yeah, you're going to want to stretch out before you do this one because my, uh, my thread wrapping muscles are getting tired whatever those are. Okay, so on this one, I'm only gonna put orange over the top of this and not yellow. So the next step is I'm going to take a piece of orange and I'll tie that in real tight. But I'm not going to do yellow. There's just too much going on right here in the hook gap. So we're just going to give yellow a free pass today. But I still will kind of splay that out so it at least covers the top half and top sides. Okay, so this is the, the larger size squish chenille. Um, it's badger, so it's black in the core. You can see how stretchy these little legs are. And we'll just let me get that started and then we'll switch to rotary. We're going to go about to right there because we're going to put another um, section of the, the wing material or the body material. And then we're going to finish it off with a really cool resin head. 
Okay, so for this clump, I got a little bit bigger clump, not too much bigger, but this is the part where you need it to keep that bait fish shape. So same deal, we're gonna tie that in, butt it right up to this chenille. These little rubber legs will try to get in the way, but just wrap them right down. They're not gonna make a single bit of difference. Okay, so the same thing on the bottom. You know what, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more to that bottom section. Because when it's more crinkly like this, it looks like you have more than you or yeah, more than you really do. Is that right, Spence? Sounds right. Sounds right to me too. All right, so my thread kind of creeped up closer to the hook eye than I wanted, so it's not a big deal. I can just grab that whole thing and kind of wiggle it back in place, and we'll tack that down with some glue as well because we're going to tie a little bit more in front. So what we'll do here, because I moved it, I'm going to stick some super glue right here so it won't rotate. And then we'll just pull the top over, do the thumbnail trick, and do the same process. We have been doing this whole fly. Okay, let's see how we turned out so far. And make sure that your super glue didn't grab the fibers. You want them to be flowing free just like this. This looks like my hair in the morning, Spence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then down here where we're splitting this yellow, we got to pull the yellow off to one side of the, of, of the hook each time. So you just need to split the, the fibers equally on both sides. So let's see how we're looking here. What a mess, Spence. Well, that's what those Dorado like. It's beautiful. They like that mess. Okay. Now for the head. So we have Bruiser Blend, the standard, not the junior, in Sunburst and Yellow. Wait, no, this is Laser Dub. This one's Bruiser Blend. My yellow uh, wasn't quite this good. So we're using Senyo. Works great. So I'm going to take a big chunk of it. And when I have this chunk, I'm going to start doing this with my fingers and just preening it to try to get it to, to uh, line up. So I'll just keep doing this till I feel happy with it. And I grab, that's probably way more than I need, but I know that a bunch is gonna come out of it when I do this, so. That much came out, not a big deal. I just put it back in the stack and I'll use it on the next one. So at this point, I like to pinch it right here and mash that in so I can tie that in as the head. I want that to be the top color. And I'll do the same thing with this yellow. Okay, so once we have that tied in, we can grab the sides and kind of wiggle it like this so that it's it covers up this side. And I'll just take that top portion, fold it back, make sure I don't have any extra stragglers. I think I've poked myself and bled every single fly that I've done with these. That hook's gnarly. So I'm gonna pull that back, bring my thread up, tuck it under, and then just build up a little dam and whip finish this time. My goodness. I promise I've whip finished, guys. All that thread came undone. But guess what? They don't know how many turns of a whip finish I can do. The Dorado don't. Joke's on you, freaking noobs. All right. So here we are with a, an absolute gem of a fly. So... My rule is your fly has to look, it doesn't, doesn't matter what it looks like until you whip finish. This, this fly breaks that rule because I whip finish and it still looks terrible. So we're going to do a little bit of doctoring to it. So I have a little metal comb. You can use plastic comb. You can use a mustache comb. If you can grow a, a luscious beard like some of us in this room, 
you can also use that comb. Let's talk about squash. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to comb all this out. And then I'll come in with my fingers and just kind of look to see how my head's looking. And that looks that looks pretty awesome. It's It's got quite a big, um, you know, it's, it's got a, a potential to push water. So what we can do now is dial this in um, and make and shape the head exactly how we want it. And this takes a little bit of work. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of marker work on this just to kind of make it look cool. So I'm going to take red, and this is a Prismacolor, and I'm just going to kind of feather some red into it. Um, when Dorado feed, a lot of times they'll just go up to the bait fish and bite them in half. So there's a lot of blood in the water. So we're going to, we're going to make this pretty gaudy. For all of you who like tying super gaudy flies, this is your huckleberry. There's no such thing as too gnarly. And I'm going to take brown marker and I'm just going to make a, a stripe down the top. Just like that so looks decent right now but as soon as we get some resin on this it's really gonna look cool these little uh, the red is gonna kind of look like little blood vessels and like it's gonna look all chewed up all right so the next step is I'm gonna use some resin so if you're allergic to, to resins which many people are you might have to find a different way to do this um, I am going to just take the resin and put it on my finger. And honestly, the, the solar res resins that, that are not the bone dry don't tend to have that much of a problem. So I'm just going to take the resin, put it in my finger, and I, I think I do every single one of these a little differently. <laughs> but the idea is you're going to just want to tease that resin into this head. And don't worry, we can get all the resin off the fingers pretty easily. And you, you just want a light coat for this first go around. Otherwise, it kind of mats everything down and gets nasty. But as you can see with the red, it makes it look like little blood vessels with the in, in the yellow. So I'm going to cure this round. That'll just kind of make it somewhat rigid. And we're going to do it again, but I'm just going to put the resin directly on the fly this time. Just going to go around the fly and we can get quite a bit more resin this time because we already created that base. It's not going to want to seep in anymore. So we'll take our finger and brush it out this time. And now with my opposite hand, I'm going to take this and kind of create the head shape that I'm looking for. So I'm going to kind of go like this under the fly and pinch the bottom so that I can tuck that up under. And we can, we can do some more shaping of this. But as you can see, we're starting to dial this shape of the fly in. Now, if, if anything, you want to take the resin where the hook is and make sure that that's a little more rigid than even the rest of the head because you want that to, to always kind of be out of the way of the hook there are soft fibers right there they tend to tangle up so we'll build that into a little bit more rigid head and then I mean you can keep going with this as long as you want I'm gonna put a few more layers in here it looks like the red and the black that we put in are just kind of like fibers on top of the bruiser blend, but it's really, you know, the or or the sunburst and the yellow underneath it. All right, so we're I think that's where we're going to call it here. I might maybe squish it in a little bit more when I do this last round. Okay, and your best bet is hand sanitizer. Look at that, service. All right, I'm gonna show you the final 
apply as soon as I get this crap off my fingers. I'm the gas station machine where you push the button and it blows air on your hands. Yeah. I'm quieter. <laughs> I'm quieter. I thought it was being pretty loud. Okay, so I'm going to take this comb. I'm going to brush all those fibers into themselves. And we'll just kind of comb it all out. If you don't have the black color, you can always just do that with... Um, with a marker after the fact, it just won't be as permanent. So once I have this all brushed out, I'm gonna come in with my scissors again and maybe trim it a little bit. Let me see if I can show. So if I'm trimming it, I'm just kind of letting it hang like, like this and coming up. You can trim it that way, you know, because you can get like that bait fish angle better. If I come up this way, And if we brush that out, see I have a little bit more of these straight ones that won't taper in. So we'll just nuke them and then we look like that. So anyway, there it is, the Dorado Tail Sloptimus Prime.